चैप्टर नंबर सेवेंटीन ब्रीथिंग एंड एक्सचेंज ऑफ गैसेज एज यू हैव रेड अर्लियर ऑक्सीजन ओ टू इज यूटिलाइज बाई द ऑर्गेनिज्म टू इन डायरेक्टली ब्रेक डाउन न्यूट्रिय मॉलिक्यूल लाइक ग्लूकोज एंड टू डिराइव एनर्जी फॉर परफॉर्मिंग वेरियस एक्टिविटीज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड सी ओ टू विच इज हार्मफुल इज ऑल्सो रिलीज ड्यूरिंग द अब कैटाबोलिक रिएक्शन इट इज देर फॉर एविडेंट दैट ओ टू हैज टू बी कंटिन्यूसली प्रोवाइडेड टू द सेल्स एंड सी ओ टू प्रोड्यूस बाई द सेल्स हैव टू बी रिलीज आउट दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ एक्सचेंज ऑफ ओ टू फ्रॉम द एटमोसफियर विद सी ओ टू प्रोड्यूस बाई सेल्स इज कॉल इज ब्रीथिंग कॉमनली नोन इज रेस्पिरेशन प्लीज योर हैंड्स ऑन योर चेस्ट यू यू कैन फील द चेस्ट मूविंग अप एंड डाउन यू नो दैट इट इज ड्यू टू द ब्रीथिंग हाउ डू वी ब्रीथ रेस्पिरेटरी ऑर्गन्स एंड द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ ब्रीथिंग आर डिस्क्राइब इन द फॉलोइंग सेक्शन ऑफ द चैप्टर to perform various activities the cell need energy even when we are eating sleeping or reading we require energy the food has stored energy which is re- released during the respiration therefore all living organism respire to get energy from the food in animals there are special organs which obtains o2 from the surrounding and supply it to all other cells in the body co2 produced by all the cells is also eliminated into the surrounding through this organs this organ system is called as respiratory system respiratory organs mechanism of breathing vary among different group of animals depending mainly on their habitat and level of organization lower verte- invertebrates like sponges cylindrates platforms etc ex- exchange o2 with co2 by simple diffusion over their entire body surface earthworms use their moist uh, moist cuticle and insects have a network of tubes tracheal tubes to transport atmospheric air within the body special vascularized structure called gills are used to used by most of the aquatic arthropods and mollusks where vascularized bags called lungs are used by the terrestrial forms of, uh, for the exchange of gases among vertebrates fishes use gills whereas reptiles birds and mammals respire through lungs amphibians like frogs can respire through their moist skin also mammals have a well developed respiratory system human respiratory system we have a pair of external nostrils opening out above the upper lips it leads to nasal chamber through the nasal passage the nasal chamber open into nasopharynx which is a portion of pharynx the common passage for food and air nasopharynx opens through glottis of the larynx region into the trachea larynx is a cartilaginous box which helps in the sound, sound production and hence called the sound box during swallowing glottis can be covered by thin elastic cartilaginous flap called as epiglottis to prevent the entry of food into the larynx trachea is a straight tube extending up to the mid thoracic cavity which divides at the level of fifth thoracic vertebra into a right and left pol- uh, primary bronchi each bronchi undergoes repeated division to form the secondary and tertiary bronchi and bring uh, bronchioles ending up in a very thin terminal bronchioles the trachea primary secondary and tertiary bronchi and initially bronchioles are supported by incomplete cartilaginous ring each terminal bronchioles give rise to a number of th- very thin irregular walled and vascularized bag like structures called alveo- alveoli the branching network of bronchi bronchioles and alveoli comprise the lungs we have two lungs which are covered by double layered pleura and a pleural fluid between them it reduces friction on the lung surface the outer pleural membrane is in close contact with the thoracic lining whereas the inner pl- inner pleural mem- membrane is in contact with the lung surface the part starting with the external nostrils up to the terminal bronchioles continue the conducting part by as the alveoli and their ducts from the respiration respiratory or exchange part of the respiratory system the conducting part transports the atmospheric air to the alveoli clears it from the foreign particles humidifies and also brings the air to the body temperature exchange part is the site of actual diffusion of o2 and co2 between the blood and the atmospheric 
air. The lungs are situated in the thoracic chamber, which is anatomically an airtight chamber. The thoracic chamber is formed dorsally by the ven- uh, vertebral column, ventrally by the sternum, laterally by the ribs, and on the lower side by the dome-shaped diaphragm. The anatomical setup of the lungs in the, th- in the in thorax is such that any change in the volume of the thoracic cavity will be reflected in the lung's pulmonary cavity. Such an arrangement is essential for breathing as we cannot directly alter the pulmonary volume. Respiration involves the following step, breathing or pulmonary ventilation by which atmospheric air is dr- drawn in and CO2 rich alveolar air is released out. Diffusion of gases, O2 and CO2 across alveolar membrane. Transport of gases by the blood, diffusion of O2 and CO2 between blood and tissues, utilization of O2 by the cells of the catabolic reactions and resultant release of CO2, cellular respiration as dealt in the chapter 14, Respiration. Mechanism of breathing. Breathing involves two stages, inspiration during which atmospheric air is drawn in and expiration by which the alveolar air is released out. The movement of air into and out of the lungs is carried out by creating pressure gradient between the lungs and the atmosphere. Inspiration can occur if the pressure within the lungs, intrapulmonary pressure, is less than the atmospheric pressure. That is, there is negative pressure in the lungs with respect to the atmospheric pressure. Similarly, expiration takes place when the intrapulmonary pressure is higher than the atmospheric pressure. The diaphragm and a specialized set of muscles, external and internal internal intercoastals between the ribs help in generation of such gradients. Inspiration is initiated by the cons- contraction of diaphragm which increases the volume of thoracic chamber in the anteroposterior axis. The contraction of external internal costal muscles lifts up the ribs and the sternum causing an increase in the volume of the thoracic chamber in the dorsoventral axis. The overall increase in the thoracic volume causes a similar increase in pulmonary volume. An increase in pulmonary volume decreases the intrapulmonary pressure to less than the atmospheric pressure which forces the air from the outside to move into the lungs, that is inspiration. Relaxation of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles return the diaphragm and sternum to their normal positions and reduce the thoracic volume and thereby the pulmonary volume. This leads to an increase in intrapulmonary pressure to slightly above the atmospheric pressure causing the expulsion of air from the lungs, that is expiration. We have the ability to increase the strength of the inspiration and expiration with the help of additional muscles in the abdomen. On an average, a healthy human breathes 12 to 16 times per minute. The volume of air involved in the breathing movements can be estimated by the using a spirometer which helps in clinical assessment of the pulmonary function, respiratory volumes and capacities, tidal volume, TV, volume of air inspired or expired during a normal respiration. It is approx 500 ml that is a healthy man can inspire or expire approximately 6000 to 8000 milliliter of air per minute. Inspiratory or inspiratory reserve volume, IRV. Additional volume of air a person can inspire by forcibly inspiration. This average 2500 ml to 3000 ml. Expiratory reserve volume ERV. Additional volume of air a person can expire by forcibly expiration. This average 1000 ml to 1100 ml. Residual volume RV. Volume of air remaining in the lungs even after a forcible expiration. Expiration. The average 1100 ml to 1200 ml. By adding up a few respiratory volumes described above, one can derive various pulmonary capacities which can be used in clinical diagnosis. Inspiratory capacity I see total volume of air a person can inspire after a normal expiration. This includes tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume TV plus IRV. Expiratory capacity EC total volume of air a person can expire after a normal inspiration. This includes tidal volume, tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume TV plus ERV. Functional residual capacity FRC volume of air that will remain in the lungs after normal expiration. This volume includes ERV plus RV.
vital capacity vc the maximum volume of air a person can breathe in after a forced expiration this includes erv tv and irv or the maximum volume of air a person can breathe out after a forced expiration total lung capacity total volume of air acu- accommodated in the lungs at the end of a forced inspiration this includes rv erv tv and irv or the vital capacity plus residual volume exchange of gases alveoli are the primary sites of exchange of gases exchange of gases also occur between the blood and the tissue o2 and co2 are exchanged in this sites by simple diffusion mainly based on pressure concentration gradient solubility of the gases as well as the thickness of the mem- membranes involved in diffusion are also some important factors that can affect the rate of diffusion pressure contributed by an individual gas in a mixture of gases is called as partial pressure and is represented as p o2 for oxygen and p co2 for the carbon dioxide partial pressures of these two gases in the atmospheric air and the two sites of diffusion are given in table 17.1 and in table 17.3 The data given in the table clearly indicates a concentration gradient for oxygen from alveoli to blood and blood to tissues similarly a gradient is present for co2 in the opposite direction that is from tissues to blood and blood to alveoli as the solubility of co2 is 20 to 25 times higher than that of o2 the amount of co2 that can diffuse through the diffusion member membrane per unit difference in partial pressure is much higher compared to that of o2 the diffusion membrane is made up of three major layers namely the thin squamous epithelium of alveoli the endothelium of alveolar capil- uh, capillaries and the basement substances in between them However, its total thickness is much less than a millimeter. Therefore, all the factors in our body are favorable for diffusion of O2 from alveoli to tissues and that of CO2 from tissues to alveoli. Transport of gases. Blood is the medium of transport of O2 and CO2 about 97% of O2 is transported by RBCs in the blood the remaining 3% of O2 is carried in a dissolved state through the plasma nearly 20 to 25% of CO2 is transported by RBCs whereas 70% of it is carried out as bicarbonate about 7% of CO2 is carried out in a dissolved state through plasma transport of oxygen hemoglobin is red colored iron containing pigment present in the rbcs o2 can bind with hemoglobin in a reversible manner to form oxy hemoglobin such hemoglobin molecule can carry a maximum of four molecules of o2 binding of oxygen with hemoglobin is pi- primarily related to partial pressure of o2 partial pressure of co2 hydrogen ion and concentration and temperature are the other factors which can interface with this binding a sigmoid curve is obse- obtained when percentage saturation of hemoglobin with o2 is plotted against the po2 this curve is called as oxygen dissociation curve figure 17.5 and is highly useful in studying the effect of factors like p co2 h plus concentration etc on binding of co2 with hemoglobin in the alveoli where there is a high po2 low pco2 lesser h plus concentration and lower temperature the factors are all favorable for the formation of oxyhemoglobin whereas in the tissues where low po2 high pco2 high h plus concentration and higher temperature exists the condition are favorable for dissociation of oxygen from the oxyhemoglobin this clearly indicates that o2 gets bound to hemoglobin in the lung surface and gets dissociated at the tissues every 100 ml of oxygenated blood can deliver around 5 ml of o2 to the tissues under normal physiological condition transport of carbon dioxide co2 is carried out by hemoglobin as carbino carbamino hemoglobin about 20 to 25% This binding is related to the partial pressure of CO2 PO2 is a major factor which could affect this binding 
when pco2 is high and po2 is is low as in the tissues more binding of carbon dioxide occurs whereas the pco2 is low and po2 is high as in the alveoli dissociation of co2 from the carbamino hemoglobin takes place that is co2 which is bound to hemoglobin from the tissues is delivered to the alveoli rbcs continue a very high concentration of enzyme carbonic anhydrase and a uh, minute quantities of the same in the present in the plasma too this enzyme facilitates the following reactions in both direction co2 plus h2o carbonic anhydrase h2co3 carbonic anhydrase hco3 minus plus h plus at the tissue site where partial pressures of co2 is high due to the catabolism co2 diffuses into the blood rbcs and plasma and forms hco3 and h plus at alveolar site where pco2 is low the reaction proceeds in the opposite direction leading to the formation of co2 and h2o the co2 trapped as bicarbonate at the tissue level and transported to the alveoli is released out as co2 figure 17.4 every 100 ml of deoxygenated blood delivers approximately 4 ml of co2 to the alveoli regulation of respiration human beings have significant ability to maintain and moderate the temperature uh, moderate the respiratory rhythm to suit the demands of the body tissue this is done by neural system a specialized center present in the medulla region of the brain called as respiratory rhythm center is primarily responsible for this regulation another center present in the pons region of the brain called homotaxic center can moderate the function of the respiratory rhythm center neural signals from this center can reduce the duration of inspiration and thereby alter the respiratory rate a chemosensitive area is situated adjacent to the rhythm center which is highly sensitive to co2 is situate uh, and hydrogen ions increase in this substances can activate this center which in in turn can signal the rhythm center to make necessary adjustment in the respiratory process by which the substances can be eliminated receptors associated with the aortic arc and car- carotid artery also can recognize changes in co2 and h plus concentration and send necessary signals to the rhythm center of the remedial actions the role of oxygen in the regulation of respiratory rhythm is quite significant insignificant disorders of respiratory system asthma is a difficulty in breathing causing wheezing due to inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles emphysema is a chronic disorder in which alveolar walls are damaged due to respiratory surface is decreased one of the major causes of this is cigarette smoking occupational respiratory disorders in certain industries especially those involving grinding or stone breaking so much dust is dust is produced that the defense mechanism of the body cannot fully cannot fully cope with the situation long exposure can give rise to inflammation leading to fibrosis proliferation of fibrous tissues and thus causing serious lung damage workers in such industries should wear protective masks